So I've had a few different people ask me how I put the edge came on my glass on glass mosaics when I'm finished with my mosaic. And actually, I generally like to start before I work on my mosaic with my edge came. The edge came, you can just buy this at a stained glass store. They probably have an edge, be an edge came bender if you wanted to make it a circle. That's actually what I do is I go to my local stained glass shop and I use their edge came bender because this kind of stuff comes straight. And this is zinc edge came. So I'm gonna show you how I, how I give my edge came strength. And I use No Days Glaze. Um, if you're familiar with that, the No Days Glaze comes in rolls. This is just a sample pack, but the No Days Glaze comes in rolls and it's basically it strips that fit into your edge came. And I'm going to show you how to use this instead of silicone or putty, which you could use as well. They're just messy. And I prefer doing this because it adds strength. The putty doesn't necessarily add strength to the window. It does prevent it from rattling. This has been prepped with some adhesive for my mosaic, except I didn't use edge came. So you can see that when that's finished, it's still gonna rattle like that, even though I grout it, which means that the grout is gonna have a chance to come out. So I'm gonna So first of all, I'm going to take the strips of the No Days Glaze and I'm just gonna slip them right into my edge came, just like that. And so it just slips right into the edge came there and it's not falling out so I don't have to worry about heating it right now. Um, occasionally if it slips and slides and pulls out a little bit I'll actually hit it with the heat gun in the edge came before I put the window in it. My hands are only getting dirty from the edge came, not from putty. Um, I've taken a couple where I've actually I thought maybe it would save me some time so I did putty in the edges and I wanted to compare the two and see how it turned out. But the putty in the edges actually is a lot messier. It, there's only a little bit left there, but I still want to fill that. Because on the finished piece, you will be able to see that there's just one spot where there's no glazing. So I'm just going to just pull off a little piece and I stuck it in there. Okay. So I'll show you with the little piece how I prep my glaze in the came ahead of time. And I do that with my handy dandy leather gloves and my heat gun. Okay. A hair dryer won't work, it doesn't get hot enough. You could, I suppose, do this in the oven, but you're not going to have as much control. Uh, a regular embossing heat tool like you use for scrapbooking, uh, that will work as well. So I'm just going to show you. I put my gloves on both hands because what I'm doing is activating the Nodia's glaze. It needs to get hot with the heat gun. So anyway, here it goes. There you go. So you can see the no days glazing start to melt right there, right? All right, so it's melting into the edge came. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but that's the idea, all right? And see how it does pull back a little bit, but that should be all right when we put the window in because we're gonna reheat the window. The window's gonna get warm especially the edge cam is going to get warm. So I'm going to need a way to keep it attached while I'm moving my window. And I'm going to start with this big side. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm piecing together edge cam because I had scraps left over and they just happen to fit. You can use one long piece of edge cam. That works just as well. All right. So that No Days Glaze, it is adding a little bit of girth to my edge came. So before I had this worked out and it would fit just perfectly, but you can see now if I have my edge came in there, there's gonna be a little gap. Well, that gap is gonna disappear as I heat set the no days glazing. So I'm gonna start by putting a little bit of tape on the spot where I'm gonna start. And that's just gonna help hold this in place after I heat it. All right, I've got one hand on top, my gloves on. I should put this glove on too, because I will have to touch the window a little bit, potentially. And I've got my heat gun. And I'm going to start at the bottom, because now I've got the weight of the window pushing against that no days glaze as soon as it melts. And I want to remember that glass can thermal shock, so I don't want to just concentrate the heat in this one spot. I do want to occasionally go all over and just make sure that the window is not getting too hot in any, any different 
any specific spot. And this is window glass, not art glass. The window glass is actually a little bit more heat resistant. You can get tempered glass. Tempered glass you're not going to be able to cut though. You're going to have to have that sized before you start using it. Um, I'm what I'm doing is I'm looking down into the channel because I can see when the glazing starts to get warm. And the metal is actually a conductor, so it's going to start heating that glazing before the window gets really hot enough to stick to it, and that's fine. But I can see down in between the channel, my glass kind of magnifies that shadow that's created, so when the glazing starts to liquefy, I can actually see the edge of my window change color. So I'm just turning it gradually and the weight of the window, and I am pressing down a little bit, the weight of the window and pressing down a little bit is going to help to eliminate that extra space that the glazing took up because now it's liquefying and disappearing into the channel and against the glass. So what's going to happen basically is after this cools down, it's acting as the silicone or the putty would, except it's actually increasing the strength of the hold on the glass and the edge cane. So when I hang this up, I don't have to worry that my edge cane is going to pull away from my piece because the glazing is actually helping to hold the edge cane against the glass. I have used lead on larger pieces as well. I just make sure that I use the no-days glaze because the glazing actually helps to hold the lead in place. So the glass and the lead are going to become one, basically. I mean, they're not fusing together. All right, so now I've changed the camera angle, and I'm showing you right here, if you can see that. This is the side that's already been set, so you can see the no-days glaze has become... Um, kind of transparent along the edge of the glass. You can't see the edge of the glass anymore. And now right there, you can see the edge of the glass. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start heating again right in here because I don't know that I've actually pressed the glass against there. So you'll be able to see what's going on. I hope. Now remember, I'm doing this because I want to get rid of that extra little sixteenth of an inch that the No Days Glaze adds between the glass and the cane. I want to melt that No Days Glaze and I want it to grab on to the glass and the metal. And that's going to strengthen my edge cane. So you can kind of see there, see how that no-days glaze is just creeping in, filling in that gap. All right, now that's gone, and I'm going to switch, or just turn the window a little bit. And then that's going to hold your edge came in place, it's going to prevent your glass from wiggling, and then you're ready to do the next step. Now again, you could do this process with silicone, and that would give you a nice hold. The putty would fill in that gap so you're not going to get any rattling but it's not going to give you any strength. Alright so I think I've gotten all the way around looks like maybe that last little spot needs to fill in yet and when that happens I'm just going to turn the heat gun off and I need to let that cool down a little. Okay so I have my stained glass station set up here. Let me show you that to you. Okay so I've got my soldering iron. Alright, got my soldering iron. This is my flux. I keep my flux in this glass jar with my flux brush. Um, so when it's not in use, I just set it aside, but you want to make sure that you don't leave it next to anything metal because it's a little corrosive, okay? And I'm just using this gel flux, all right? So I just put a little gel flux in there, and my soldering iron needs to warm up still. So I'm using solder and this is 60-40 solder. You could use 50-50 as well. It's lead and tin. So the lead is the solder. I think the tin um, strengthens it up a little bit because if you were just going to use 100% lead, it's just going to pull apart, right? So the tin is going to help it to set up quicker. The 50-50 I think sets up even quicker and it's a little bit stronger because this is 60 lead, 40 tin. And 50-50 is obviously even amounts. But I'm um, using what I have around. 
Okay, so this is lead, which means that if you've got any scratches in your fingers, you don't necessarily want to um, use it uh, with bare hands, so you want to put some gloves on. Remember, don't pick your nose or stick your hands in your mouth, smoke a cigarette, uh, stick your hands in your eyes, pet your cat or your dog, uh, or your baby, or your husband. Make sure you wanna wash this off after you're done using it. And I have a special soap that actually takes heavy metals off, but um, I think any soap will probably work. But I like the heavy metal soap because then I'm extra certain that it's getting rid of all those heavy metals. So I'm gonna take off this one spot where I had taped. And the first thing that I wanna do is apply flux. And the reason I'm gonna apply flux, it's an acid and it's gonna eat off any dirt or oils and prepare that surface to accept the solder. The solder's only gonna stick to the metal and it's only gonna stick where there's flux. And this isn't hard to do, so if you've never done this before, don't really be, you know, it's, it's, you don't have to be that concerned about it. I think there are actually really cheap soldering irons that you can use um, if you've, you know, if you, that same stained glass store where you w went to get your edge came or bend your edge came, you can head over there and they probably have some soldering irons that they might, um, well, certainly sell you, but they might even, you know, show you how to use them, um, show you how they use them. They might have different kinds of soldering irons so you can figure out which one you like the best. Right here I'm just cleaning the um, the gunk off of my tip. All right, so it's smoking now and I think it's gonna be pretty hot. So um, you've probably noticed I did put flux on that spot right there, okay? So it's got flux on it now, so it's gonna be ready to accept that solder if the soldering iron is hot enough. And I think it is because I'm touching it and see how that solder just melted right on there. So if you were soldering lead, it doesn't take long at all for that lead to just stick on there. And this iron looks like it's nice and hot. Zinc sometimes takes a little bit more heat. Well, it always does. Zinc takes more heat to get that solder to stick. So you have to sit on there a little bit longer, but as you noticed, I barely touched it at all before it just zapped right in there. So the solder is becoming one with the edge came and it's sealing up that, that seam and making it whole. And I might be making this look easy, I don't know. I've done it a little bit, I'm not an expert. Some people solder all the time, and they're really good at it. I solder when I need to, because I'm not crazy about it. But I'm just going to flux that spot there and even out this seam. Okay. Because I want it to look pretty, even though it's the edge. Nobody's really looking at the edge, right? Right. Some people are going to look at it. They're always going to look at it. All right, how good did she do that? All right, so that's my one seam. I'm gonna go ahead and continue putting this edge came on and I'll show you how to attach uh, brass wires. Ah, here they are. Just the brass wire hangers, okay? All right, I've got some prepped here already, but like I said, I'm gonna show you how I make those. It involves brass wire. This is 16 gauge. You can go 14 gauge too, and it's going to be even tougher. Round nose pliers, or a pencil, or a Sharpie marker. Wire cutters as well. That's got a cutter in it. Sharpie marker, round nose pliers. I'm going to use my pliers to kind of get this started. It's kind of like wire working. So if you've done any jewelry, this is the same idea. And I'm gonna get that started and then I'm gonna use just wrap. And the lower the gauge wire, the wider, the thicker the wire is gonna be. So 14 gauge is even thicker and it's even tougher 
to do this. I'm not really using that much pressure. But the 14 is going to be even stronger. Okay, and I'm just using brass. Just got this at the hardware store, my local Ace Hardware. I like going to Ace whenever I can because they're so helpful there. All right. So now I've got this coil. Nice coil. And I'm just going to smoosh these edges so they're nice and round. So now what I have to do is separate my coil so that I can cut it. I'm just going to pull on it to separate it. And I'm going to try and go flush with where it ends to cut. So there's one, two. Three. All right, so these are all my jump rings now, basically. Big jump rings, wire hangers. I'm just going to close that. Those have been tinned already, and basically what it means to tin this wire, um, it's brass, and I, need, I, I want it to be silver to match my edge came. And if I end up putting a patina on the edge came, a patina is going to change the color on it. I can make it look black. Um, I'm, I need to have lead on this brass wire so that it's going to accept that patina as well. Um, tinning basically just means I'm going to put a, 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 a um, thin layer of solder on the wire. And that's going to turn it silver. See how it just goes right on there? Maybe you can see it. And it looks like I got it on both sides. And if I didn't, I can finish that after I attach it as well. So that's basically what I mean when I say tin. Okay? So I've got all these tinned already. I want to put the spot where I made that cut. I want to put that spot down here because that's going to be a weaker area. So I want to make sure that I'm reinforcing it. All right, so I've got this down there. And I'm going to just put more flux on there, more flux on here. Remember, that's going to clean that up make it ready to accept more. Now notice I'm holding this in place with the wire um, or with my little pliers here because once that solder, I can attach it on one side, okay, there we go, and when that solder melts it doesn't really support the hanger anymore so if I were to if I were to melt all of this and not be holding on to this hanger, it would just fall right off. So I'm just going to try and attach it on one side first. There we go. It's falling down in there. Okay. I'm going to let that dry. Dry. Uh, cool down, basically. All right. So now it's attached over on this side. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Let's get it in here so you can really see it. All right. It is attached on that side. So I don't want to touch that side first. I'm going to do this side. So I'm going to put a little bit of solder over here. Whoops, fell right off. It's flexed, but it's not hot. All right, so now I've got it hanging on over here. All right, let that cool down. It's going to solidify. You can kind of watch it happen. I'm going to add just a little bit more solder over here just to make sure that I'm all in the right place and you can see that ran off so the nice thing about having a solder that sets up quicker is it doesn't run off like that as much so now I've just got this mess left over right and I'm just gonna use my soldering iron to make that look pretty just um, with flux soldering iron even it out a bit Alright, I think that'll work. Now I'm going to make it look pretty on this front side again. Put another hanger over here. And then that's going to be ready to mosaic.